Hey folks, Shesky here. So Tower of Babel came out last night. I got up early, I cleared the whole thing, so I figured I'd do a quick overview because I'm sure a lot of people have questions. I didn't record footage of my initial blind run because it was a blind run. It was a complete mess. I, this is, these aren't Battle System 2.0 fights, so you don't have any warning of triggers or like what's upcoming for the boss mechanics. So I just kind of smashed my face into it and got through the whole thing. Uh, if you want an idea of how well it went, this is the final round of the final fight. As you can notice, Predator is one hit away from dying, and the boss is also one hit away from dying. I can only imagine her saying something like cool in anime at this moment, like, it's over, before like finishing the fight. So that's how it went. Uh, so... Yeah, I'll give you a brief overview of the mechanics, because uh, this one's interesting. It doesn't work how you would think it would work. So this is split up into three areas, each of which have their own floors. Each floor has different elements. Uh, I think I got through everything on my first try. Wait, no, no, no. This floor, I actually had to retry one of the floors, because one of the bosses has a dick mechanic. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but yeah, they're not too hard. They are going to require you have a wide roster of characters, though, because you're going to need multiple teams in every element. Uh, yeah, I mean, technically, you probably get away with just one team in every element. That's really good. Uh, but if you're not super strong, then you, you will benefit from having multiple teams in each element. Because uh, for simply clearing, you can have a team die and then bring in a new team and have them die and bring in another team. So you have like essentially three tries. It's not like Proving Grounds where in order to clear, you have to clear with just one team. You can bring in backup teams as they die out. So clearing is not too bad. Let's jump in an area real quick. So each area is divided into four floors. Each floor has its own fights. A point that confused me initially is uh, this first fight is fire. So I would want to bring water, obviously. That doesn't mean, however, I would have to bring water against the light boss and the wind boss. Uh, if there's like a segment like this, that means between segments you're going to be able to switch your, your element. So I would bring water against this, get a break, and then be able to switch to dark for the next one, and then fire for the next one. And similarly, there's gaps between this and gaps between these, so you can switch. And this final one, there's no gaps, and all that means is you can't switch element during this, but the whole floor is only one element, so you wouldn't want to switch element anyway. Uh, so that's how that works. Let's take a second, it was time for Cuddles, so he's going to be joining us. Let's look at parties, because this is a bit different than Proving Grounds. Like Proving Grounds, you still will have to make multiple teams. However, you're also going to have to make them in multiple elements because uh, you're going to be facing multiple elements, so you want to maintain elemental advantage. If you need a reminder on what elements you'll be facing, you just hit f View Photo Elements, and it will give you this little reminder. Now, a couple interesting things here that are significantly different than Proving Grounds. If I pull open Party, notice that Jita is the leader of this party. That's fairly standard. However, Zoe is the leader of this party, and Vakala is the leader of this party, and uh, what that means is you don't get a main character on every team. You only get them on party one. Now, you can still summon on party two and three as long as Jita is alive. If Jita dies, then you lose the ability to summon on your later teams. So that can be a big deal. Uh, another thing, you only get one grid. So uh, if you're running things like Ultima weapons, Bahamut weapons, Hollow Sky weapons, anything that cares about specific characteristic of the characters, uh, they're not going to be great here. Because it's highly unlikely with most of those weapons you're going to have them match literally every character you're bringing. Now, if you're really strong in one team and you're only bringing one team, then obviously that's not going to be that big a deal. Also, you only get one summon deck for the whole uh, the whole set of characters as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, overall, we're breaking some new ground here. I, th this event is exciting because it does some new stuff that I haven't seen them do before. Stig decided he had enough cuddles for now, so let's talk missions. So if you clear the floor, you can get rewards. But if you want all the rewards, then you have to master the floor, and that requires doing all the missions for each floor. And the missions gate some of the cooler rewards, like the earrings in this case, so definitely try and do them if you can. However, the missions 
can be a little bit tricky. They are unique to each area, and all the ones for this area are going to be clear within one turn. Uh, now, it's going to depend on what your grids are like, what your summons are like, and especially what your rosters are like in terms of whether or not you're actually easily be able to clear those missions. For example, in this area, the mission's going to be to clear each one of these in one turn. That's not going to be too hard for these first few floors because these are different segments. However, when you get into this fight, both fights are in one segment. So I believe that does mean you need to be able to kill this boss and this boss on turn one. And that might be a little tricky. So let's jump in and it'll let me show you the switching mechanic because that's also new and pretty exciting. Okay. So we're going to take a Varuna for this. You might be thinking, why are you taking a Bonito if you're trying to one turn kill? You'll see. So we have a little bit of a weird setup. We'll talk about that in a second. But the first thing you're going to notice when you jump in is you've got this giant switch party button. So this lets you switch to any of your other parties. Uh, doing that doesn't advance a turn. So you, you could use all the skills in one party, switch to another party, and then use all the skills on the, the other party. Uh, but it does have a three turn cooldown. So you'd be able to switch to one party and then you'd have to wait three turns to switch again. So that's the first thing to note. Now let's talk about this team real fast. Uh, I'm using, uh, there's probably better setup, but this works, so that's what I'm using. Uh, we're taking, uh, what is the name of this class? Warlock, with some of its nukes, and then we're taking some characters you don't normally see. So this is Water Vera, Vila, Vera and Caterpillar. She's in her idol skin, which is why she looks like this. And I'm taking her because she can water death down and double nuke, because she can reset both her nukes like that. Fun fact, this was how I initially cleared the Kasha 30 hits way back in the day when that was a thing people worried about. So let's do all our nukes. I forgot how you pronounce these characters' names, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, but they've got pretty powerful nuke as well. In addition, we're mostly gun characters, so they actually get instant charge bar from that, which lets them triple attack. Uh, sorry, triple strike and triple attack guaranteed, which is a pretty strong burst move, but we're not going to do that. So I could use Kukuru's nukes here, but what I'm going to do is summon something, and this will let me illustrate the second point. So, uh, while using a summon would normally mean we can't use it on the next fight, the next fight actually resets your summons for some reason. Because it's still turn one. Look at the turn counter. But now I can summon again. So that's why I wanted to use the summon there, because it lets me get her. Uh, it lets me save Kukuru's nukes for this floor, which gets me a little bit extra damage. I don't think we're going to need it, though. So now we'll switch to my finishing team. And you might have been wondering, why aren't you taking a Benito? Well, you'll see. I don't need a stinking Benito. So obviously, we're going to try and charge and attack this guy down with super ton of charge attack damage. I'm going to get... Uh, all Vicia's, uh, like, water death down. Is that the water death down? Is that the right skill? Wait, no. I'm using the wrong one. It's fine. We don't need it. Here, I'm supposed to be using this one. <laughs> that's, that's the water death down. I know what I'm doing, I promise. So let's do all this stuff. And then, I don't need Benito, because I can just use a Makula Marius. And that should work out just well enough to give everyone the charge bar they need to kill this thing anyways. Because Silva charge attacks like a freaking boss. And there we go. Easy. Plenty of room to spare. And that's how you do that mission. So you kind of see that, yeah, you got a lot of uh, tools to play with because you can essentially use like eight characters worth of skills in one turn if you want. But in order to clear this, you are going to have to juggle around and try and find the exact right set of characters, depending on what you have. Let's look at these other floors real quick. So I didn't do this floor yet. What is this one? This is floor, this is uh, area two. Okay, so yeah, these are pretty specific, but they're not hard. So note that uh, finish with a skill, finish with a skill, finish with charge attack. Uh, these don't say anything about 
kill the thing in one turn. So you take all the time you want for these. It's just you got you got to like knock the boss down like five percent health and save your skills and just nuke the boss down the rest of the way. Or same thing with charge attacks. So these are pretty simple. They just require you to play in a certain way. So that's why I didn't do it here. I did do this floor. What was this floor? It is hard to read with that text on there. Using no potions. So that's why I did this one. So again. This one's easy. Just don't use a potion. Like, remember, you have 12 characters you can burn through for any of these floors. I mean, I didn't even need 12. I just used 8. So, like, you've got a ton of room. So don't, just don't use a potion. Like, if someone's, if someone's gonna die, just let him die. If he dies, he dies. It's fine. And this one is the one that's gonna be a little bit tricky. The final floor, obviously. Because, uh... The requirement is losing no allies for all these floors, so requires a little bit of careful play. Some of these bosses, like this final boss, obviously, is a little bit tricky to do that with because they, they just do a lot of damage. Um, it's worth noting that I did this boss using dark. So if I wanted to not lose anybody, I'd probably just go into an element that's not dark since dark is not exactly the element that is known for valuing the, the lives of its members. Also, real quick, because I mentioned at the front, uh, the thing that the floor I had to repeat was this one, because there's a dick move here. This second boss, this wave two, one shots your whole team. I'm not sure if there's a way around it, like a trick you can do, but when I went in, like I wasn't, I only had one team, because like I, I I was just blowing through all these, so I only bothered making this first team, and I'm like, okay, easy game, easy life, clear the first floor. Start second floor, Bosch's one shots. Everybody's like, the fuck? <laughs> so I made a second team specifically to finish that boss off. So that, that that's a thing to watch out for when you do that floor. D don't 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 get all cocky like me. Conclusions. I like this mode, and that's not surprising because I like proving grounds as well. I find these modes fun because they let you use a huge number of characters. They force you to use a huge number of characters. Because honestly, uh, if you've been playing this game for a while, you probably have uh, a giant roster of characters you frankly don't use like 90% of the time. There's just a ton of characters in this game that you don't use because they're not a meta choice. There's not a good reason to use them over specific other character that's just better. But when you're in situations where you have very niche challenges or uh, you just need the manpower of having multiple waves of characters come in, uh, it's fun to to be able to use multiple uh, multiple teams like this. I, I like it. It's interesting. Also, like the whole thing where you don't have like Jita on every single team is kind of kind of fascinating to me. I wonder if they're gonna do more of that because like it, it definitely feels a lot different to not have main character in in slot one. So yeah, I like that event. I think my only criticisms of it, and I don't know if this is fair, but it's kind of short. Like, I blew through the thing in, like, an hour and a half. Granted, I still need to do the masteries for floor two, which shouldn't take any time at all. For floor four, it's going to take a little bit more time, but that's just going to be me figuring out what team I want to use and also getting a better sense of when the triggers are because running into a trigger at the bad time is going to definitely kill somebody. Uh, but that, that probably will take another hour or two. So, like, it was pretty fast clear. And I say that's not fair because obviously I'm fairly end game. I have a ton of characters. My grids are pretty good. So uh, yeah, it was fast for me. Uh, for someone that like isn't quite as end game, that doesn't have a giant roster of characters, doesn't have a ton of summons, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to clear everything and especially to do the missions. Uh, so it's probably fine there. That said, I'm looking at this map and like I think part of the reason I think it's short is because this map's so freaking large. But you're only clearing the funny, the first teeny bit of it. Just the first few steps in this map. So I would guess that they're just going to keep on expanding this map until you get to the very top. At least that's the ambition. I think what's really going to happen is 2025 is going to roll around and maybe we'll be up to here on the map. And like, you know, maybe before the game finishes, maybe we'll make it to the top. I mean, that... That's a little cynical, but just given like the release schedule for these kind of games and how fast they, they add new stuff, uh, that would be my prediction. It's going to be a while before we're seeing the top of this tower. So, 
Anyways, if you found this helpful, let me know down below. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. I don't know if I'm going to do another video on this. I, I might. I might do one for, like, the final round of missions. We'll see. Tell you what. If you leave a comment below and let me know if you're having a trouble with a particular area, then uh, if I get enough comments about one area, one mission, uh, maybe I'll do some videos specifically tackling some of the more difficult missions that people are stumbling on. But yeah, yeah. I'll catch you guys later. Bye!